<laughs> Biden. They are planning to impeach maybe Mayorkas. In a couple of weeks, they're going to have two votes to waste. Once, like, McCarthy's gone, and uh, I can't remember who the other one was going to become president of, uh, I can't remember who it is, but he's gone in, in, a, in like, I think a week and a half. They're going to have two votes to waste. They're going to have a three-vote margin. Tie gets you nowhere in the House. There's no tie-breaking uh, uh, right. uh, situation. And by mid-February, there's going to be an election for George Santos' seat. And uh, that could swing right. towards the Democrats. Swazi could win there. What are they going to do when they can't, when they go down the road to impeach Biden and then they can't even impeach him in the House? Um, like, what's Mark Molinaro going to vote for? What's like, you know, uh, what's his face from California? You know, there's a couple of, uh, of Republicans who it seems can't afford to go down there. And now the more they investigate, the more dirt they find on trump <laughs> right yeah it's uh they, you know they're a very day at a time caucus <laughs> so they will cross that bridge you know if and when they get to it that you saw how that worked out for kevin mccarthy like his whole strategy for becoming speaker and staying speaker was a day at a time and at last he, he made it what nine months or something like that um and so he got he gets uh, a Wikipedia page for speakers of the house, and he can take that kind of wooden that oak thing with his name etched in it and put it on his wall. Uh, but that's that's it. Um, they they don't they they don't seem to have a strategy. Uh, but the if the impeachment is to try to make um, Steve Bannon and his base happy. They'll, they can put it on the floor. The moderate Republicans can vote against it. Steve Bannon can then be angry at the moderate Republicans. But Steve Bannon is also pretty savvy. And so he'll eventually tell his crowd to move on to something else because what's the point of you know, real, wasting all of your time going after these uh, Republicans who are now running in swing districts? They'll, you know, they'll find something else shiny to go after. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's just a, a day-at-a-time thing. And maybe you punt the impeachment vote as far as you can and and hope that people forget about it like th their strategy seems to be just surviving and hoping people forget about what they're what they're what they promised are, are they, is is mike johnson right now preparing to do um like uh, uh something that he hopes people forget about in terms of like the continuing resolution i mean this is the thing the other thing that's coming up what, what well, he, we, like, he's uh, also he's also gonna <clears throat> have a bad spent a bad government spending deal to try to get through uh because you know, he's negotiating with Schumer and, you know, some of this was already baked in. Freedom Caucus, Caucus is going to be mad about whatever deal they come up with. Now they want to shut the government down over the border. Uh, and so that never, none of it ever ends well for Republicans and always ends with a stain on whoever the speaker, Republican speaker's face is. And so he's got to give in that context, he's got to give them something. So I was like, all right, here's your, here's your Mayorkas and Biden impeachment votes. Take these because he doesn't have anything to give them for the most part. Like that, that's it within his power to do other than shutdowns and impeachment votes. Is Schumer not giving him a bunch of stuff on immigration? I mean, it's it feels like the Democrats are getting uh, are going in and getting ready to, you know, um, mm -hmm. give away a lot of stuff in terms of like uh, immigrants and, and sort of, uh, I don't know, provide. Uh, the more draconian border policies or whatnot. I mean, what is, yeah, and, do you have any sense of that? Yeah. And Johnson is saying that he's going to also try to negotiate directly with the white house over this, but it's a real, you know, don't throw me in the briar patch situation. I think for Democrats who are just, you know, they don't have any ideological commitment to, uh, like decent immigration policies. It's, you know, the immigrant, the situation of the border is causing them political harm. Uh, they're losing share with uh, uh, Hispanics, even as you know Trump is the head of the Republican Party. So they they are kind of abandoning their whole kind of soft on immigration rhetoric that they've adopted over the last you know five six years. So I think they actually are happy to have Republicans force their hand and do some type of crackdown at the border.
you know, uh, right. that means that uh, Fox News will never call Biden soft on immigration again. Yes, exactly. And problem solved. Right. It, yeah. I, I, yeah. As long as the objective conditions change, then, of course, then it, it's just be crazy because this is uh, honestly this is a really old trap that Democrats fell into with something like abortion, too, where we're not even going to say the word like let's not say the word. And how does that work out? You leave a vacuum and the right completely dominates the conversation and you see polling numbers, we've covered this on the show, when you ask questions about immigration, there's general confusion about what our policy even is and what a path forward would be. And that's directly the result of Democrats basically leaving the entire conversation to the Republicans to frame it in a certain way. And instead of thinking in a more structural, forward-thinking way, the Biden administration is just caving to what that framing is um and he will get not he will get zero political points for it zero none yeah that, i think that's probably right but um they also don't care they're like they they democrats are fine with cracking down on the border i think yeah like, but just speaking out as as a political matter if they're out there they're, they're gonna get caught with this mayorkas impeachment aren't they because if they're out there saying, yes, we need to crack down more on the border, well, then who do you blame for that? Right? Well, You've got they, to blame, blame Mayorkas. Like, how many can, votes are the, 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 uh, the Republicans going to get to impeach Mayorkas? Maybe, maybe the issue of there being only a two-person uh, um, uh, majority for the Republicans or a three-person majority for Republicans is not going to be an issue. Because if the, Republi if the Democrats are going to, um, if they're going to cave on this... That means that they're not going to be able to provide any type of sort of, never mind, direct defense from Mayorkas. They're not going to be able to put out any ideas in which to make the Mayorkas um, impeachment look like, uh, you know, some type of fanatical uh, craziness by the Republicans. Some of them are going to have to vote for it. Well, the idea that they can put forward, I don't think any of them will. We'll see. Um, the idea that they can put forward is that the laws haven't been updated since the 1980s. The laws are broken. It's not Mayorkas's fault that Congress has refused to give him a rational immigration system to, to execute, mm -hmm. to implement. Uh, and then that'll be the justification for some crackdowns and some, and some new laws that, that they may, may or may not get through. Because the Republicans also have no interest in solving the, the situation. Like, right. They would rather it, it stay in the news and you have constant video of, of people coming across the border and you have Democratic mayors complaining publicly about the migrant crisis, refugee crisis in their in their cities like they, they don't have any incentive like to solve to actually make the world better, particularly if there's a Democrat in the White House like to them, you know, uh, they'd rather have the crisis. So All that's right. why I think it might not happen. Um, interesting. We'll see, I guess. Um, all right. One more thing I want to talk to you about. Uh, you've been covering this uh, story of Imran Khan in, in Pakistan. Uh, do we have that clip? Yeah. Um, let's play this clip. Um, Wait for the end. You guys are going to love it. Okay. Um, and, and folks go, I think you interviewed Imran Khan in, in November, was it? Uh, I, think, I, think I think June uh, for Deconstructed and uh, Counterpoints, yeah. June? Oh, God. Yeah, because he, he was in jail by July or August. Right. And the, you, you hadn't interviewed him after that. Oh, my God. Right. That was a long time ago. Uh, it felt like it was a month ago. I like to be one month <laughs> behind, and I didn't realize I was six. But here is uh, here you are uh, again. Is this that same day uh, where you were at the State Department, or this uh, different day? Different day. Okay, uh, Matt Miller again on the different uh, different tie. Different tie. Oh. Ryan, go ahead. Follow up quickly on the question earlier about the Pakistani election. Yeah, you said it is for the Pakistani people to choose their government, and not only, as he mentioned, is. Uh, the former prime minister in jail at the time, but you're also seeing something rather extraordinary where members of his party who are filing to run for office, and there's a lot of video evidence from around the country that you may have seen this, they're filing to run for office and they're being arrested and abducted at the 
at the filing office, they're also arresting the quote unquote approvers, people who signed their petitions as well. So you're not going to have any candidates for the people to choose from. So how can Pakistani people choose their government if there's nobody to choose from on, on the ballot? And is this something uh, that is concerning? So I will say, without commenting on that, the, the specific matters, we want to see um, free and fair elections that are conducted in accordance with Pakistan's laws. It's not for the United States to dictate to, to Pakistan um, uh, how it conducts, the spe exact specifics of how it conducts its election, um, but to make clear that we want to see those elections conducted in a free fair and peaceful manner that includes freedom of expression, peaceful assembly and association, uh, and ultimately a full, uh, open, reliable, vibrant democratic process. But it feels like election rigging of this level would merit sanctions if any other, if a Maduro-like government did something like this, it would seem like I, the State Department might come down a little harder. This is 250 million person democracy. Uh, and we will continue to support uh, democratic expression and uh, a vibrant democracy in Pakistan, but I don't have anything to preview from here. And you just said you will continue to support democratic suppression. Is that I said expression. Oh, expression. expression. Mm. You didn't, but... Uh. Well, also, what is democratic e expression? Like, I mean, I you know... I sort of get that, but I've never... Art earlier pieces. he said earlier he said freedom of expression um but democratic expression i know what democratic suppression is democratic expression is aspirational mm -hmm. aspirational and they want it, people to really want uh, democracy there um it's, it's, this it's is, expressing the like the idea of democracy by having <laughs> a thing that they call an election even if there aren't candidates on the ballot but you go and you check a box there, it really feels like uh, Joe Biden's foreign policy, and this was supposedly his thing, right? <laughs> I mean, this is why Obama chose him. He had been on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee for like 50 years or something. That, that's an exaggeration, yeah. but not a huge no, one. But not much. <laughs> um, and it really feels like th that the U.S. is completely rudderless here. I mean, do you yes. get that sense? I mean, yes. we're not I mean, like we have thing... no like stake in what's happening in 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 Pakistan. Like this is well, a... we, well, there unfortunately there was a rudder in Pakistan, and as we reported, like the the U.S. Uh, urged the military to oust Imran Khan because Imran Khan was neutral in the in the Ukraine Russia war, uh, and now that the military backed regime is in there, Pakistan is helping create make munitions and uh for the ukrainians uh and is otherwise you know uh pliant you know towards u.s interests as it relates to china uh india you know and russia and so we actually do have a rudder going there um it just doesn't match our kind of rhetoric around belief in democracy and it's 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 really shocking to think about a country of that size like 250 million people which you know, at times like I had military dictatorships, other times the democratic yeah. institutions pushed back through, um, had GDP growth, significant GDP growth under, under Khan. Um, now it's just an absolute economic basket case. And they're, like I said, literally arresting down ballot candidates as they show up to file for office and not even charging them with anything. And Miller clearly and the State Department clearly feels zero pressure because it's like, well, who are we to dictate, you know, exactly how you run an election you know, as long as you have an election? And like they would that would just never fly from any country that wasn't doing 100 percent of the other other bidding of the United States. Like they not not letting people on the ballot and, and abducting them and not even charging them. Because one thing if, if like all of these candidates happen to be you know criminals that showed up, but you're not even charging them with anything. It, it, it really, uh, maybe it's just a function of, uh, of, of our news and uh, having social media, but in my lifetime, I don't remember such a naked sort of like, we've got two books. And when we talk about this, we'll read from this book. Mm -hmm. When we talk about that, we'll read from this book. I mean, it really is like, you know, again, um, when it came to uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we had the, um, uh, the, 
the war crimes assessment done within uh, three or four weeks. Uh, with Israel, right. it's going to take, it may take, who knows? It could take six months. Don't it could take nine judgment. months. Don't want to rush judgment. We don't, we don't have the resources to do this type of investigation. They can, they can have a top intelligence person leak without evidence that we know there was a command center with hostages right. there under a hospital, but we can't really make the assessment of the 2,000 bombs, the 200, 2,000-pound bombs that were dropped in the supposed safe zone. It, yeah. it, this is, it really is astonishing. Very it's bold. It's getting really dark, yeah. Well, Ryan, um, at least we got to see your tie. I knew it. Clip. I yes. knew it. I was waiting. I was one, waiting. Right? It's a big, thick one. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if uh, but the tie was wider. Paisley, so that's okay, right? That kind yeah. of paisley. I don't know if that's. I, like I mean, that's paisley. nice if you're going to a very fancy dinner, but <laughs> I don't know that that's one I would have worn there in that situation. I'm going back to the Jerry Garcia ties. If I'm going to get grief for it, I'm just going all the way back. Jerry Garcia ties will 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 at least like you come in there and be the Jerry Garcia type of uh, rep, but like you're wearing ties that like honestly you'd wear to a wedding. That is fancy, a wedding tie. Fancy wedding. Yeah. I don't, What's yeah. a Jerry Garcia tie? I've only seen him ever in like tie dye. I mean, oh, I don't... he had uh, he did the whole line he did of ties. The whole line of ties because he would do like artwork. I mean, he was a good artist. Huh. He was. Yeah. Yeah. Check him out. You'll like him. Okay. That's what it means to be a mighty man of valor. Yes, yes, that's what it means. <laughs>